We're here with Carrie Pickett, senior congressional correspondent for The Washington Times. Carrie, thanks for joining us today. You've written, uh, written a recent piece, Whistleblowers Describe Out-of-Control Culture of Corruption at FBI Field Offices. This obviously has to do with the recent uh, FBI raid on former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence in Florida. Kind of what's the story here? Well, what you have here, of course, is the uh, is the uh, situation here where you have the uh, Timothy Tebow. He is now the former assistant uh, or rather the uh, one of the ASACs over at the D.C. field office over in the FBI. He is no longer there. His last day was a. Uh, last Friday. And uh, it, that seems to be the a straw that really broke the camel's back for a lot of uh, FBI agents. And uh, they're simply calling on Chris, Chris, Christopher Ray to resign. But honestly, what we're seeing now is that there's this, many people are sort of wondering whether or not Christopher Ray can really stay on board. People are very often people have said, well, this has to do with Trump. Honestly, I've been covering whistleblowers uh, over at the FBI for, you know, around four or five years now. And they have been, uh, you know, seeing a lot of corruption at the management level mm -hmm. at the FBI. And the problem is there really isn't a real whistleblower process over at the FBI uh, where there isn't retaliation from FBI brass. And they have been trying to really set that up over on Capitol Hill for a number of years. But unfortunately, the FBI finds a way to sort of get around it. In fact, it's the only law enforcement agency, um, or rather federal law enforcement agency, that, that really doesn't have a real solid whistleblower process for rank and file uh, personnel to really go through the, mm -hmm. where they're not retaliated against. Now, what do I mean by retaliation? Well, you'll, I, I have seen situations where you have FBI agents who will say, well, we're being coerced or or um, or uh, forced into signing false affidavits or perhaps situations where there's sexual harassment, uh, stalking. Uh, there are situations where we're now seeing, and this is getting out there, of uh, fabrication of uh, opening up ter terrorism cases to pump their numbers. And this is all being brought to the uh, House Judiciary Committee. And you're saying, well, what, the, what does this have to do with Trump? You know, and I ran into this back in 2018, mind you, because I would bring this sort of to the forefront. But what this has to do with Trump is that when you have um, the FBI uh, management who would either ignore the case or would then retaliate against the uh, the FBI agent and say, well, guess what? We found something out against you and we're going to get bring our um our, our army of lawyers from the Office of General Counsel go up against mm -hmm. you and, and accuse you of something that could be false or, or or maybe you know completely frivolous, and we're going to bankrupt you in you know through sure. through, a, through like litigation. Mm -hmm. Then they just end up demoralizing them, and then you don't have any whistleblowers whatsoever. Yeah. So that's it's what ends up happening, and then you end up having things like Mar-a-Lago, and they go. Wait, hold on a second. How did Mar-a-Lago, how did the Mar-a-Lago raid come up? Well, you don't end up having brass who ends up being accountable to anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it cer certainly seems like a real lack of accountability there. Obviously, you're saying that they don't have the whole process for whistleblowers. And we heard all about whistleblowers throughout the entire Trump administration. It's like, uh, you know, the corporate media just held them up all the time. Uh, but you talked about Tebow. So that's the uh, mm -hmm. FBI uh, officer who recently left or resigned. He was the one who was involved in the Mar-a-Lago case. Is that correct? Um, there has been disputes about whether or not he was involved with Mar-a-Lago. Mm -hmm. um, there has been, uh, it's a, uh, you know, some people say that, I mean, tr Trump claimed that he was, we can't verify that. Mm -hmm. um, however, uh, the, there is an indication that he uh, was involved with the Hunter Biden laptop case. Uh, that that there's indication that he uh, slow walked the uh, the uh, inquiry into that case. Uh, mm -hmm. and that there is an indication that he uh, that that he told uh, other FBI agents not to work on the case. That, that there was a there was a suppression of it. Keep in mind uh, there are some defenders of the uh, administration over on TV who will say things like, "Oh well, you know." Uh, 
Keep in mind that the, uh, the, the Hunter Biden laptop case, that was uh, something that was being investigated over at the Baltimore field office. This has nothing to do sure. with the DC field office. Actually, that is completely wrong. The DC field office, DC always has their hands in a lot of these cases. And why is it that, you know, that's kind of funny. It's like Hunter Biden is, oh, I don't know, the president's son. Why mm -hmm. would the DC, DC field office not have an involvement? Yeah, absolutely. But obviously, we're identifying an issue here. These are the problems here. Everyone talks about the problems. And, you know, House Republicans have talked about, oh, we're going to uh, go in, um, you know, impeach uh, Christopher Ray. We're going to go and have hearings on all this kind of stuff. At the same time, there's other people saying that, you know, I don't think hearings are going to go far enough. What are the actual fixes, you think? Or what are, uh, you know, uh, conservatives and Republicans saying that the fixes are to prevent this kind of thing from happening. How do you increase accountability? I mean, we've seen this in all sorts of agencies. It seems like there's a real issue uh, regarding accountability here. How, what are they saying to fix it? Well, uh, right now you have, I mean, currently there's the FBI Whistleblower Protection Act that, w I mean, that's been around for a, a number of years now that was created. Uh, crafted primarily by uh, Senator Charles Grassley, Republican from Iowa. Uh, and that was okay, but it really didn't protect FBI whistleblowers. Every single uh, federal law enforcement agency, they have a, a wheel like whistleblower protection process, except the FBI. The FBI has over 100 attorneys and not one of them are designated to represent whistleblowers. Wow. So now you have the um you know chuck grassley as well as senator dick durbin illinois De democrat uh they are now trying to uh create the fbi whistleblower protection enhancement act it allows whistleblowers to appeal retaliation cases to the merit systems protection board this is a quasi judicial agency it oversees most federal whistleblower cases the act also allows for fbi whistleblower retaliation cases to proceed to the mspb if the fbi has not issued a ruling within 180 days that is the length of time that that the fbi supposedly attempts to you know give close these uh cases and give like a, a basic ruling as mm -hmm. to you know what what's going to happen to these whistleblower cases However, the you know one of the things that my sources say over at the FBI, like, like the problem right now with this legislation, is that the MSPB, where the senators suggest these whistleblower cases to go to, is already overloaded with thousands upon thousands upon thousands of cases. It's already backlogged. They would mm -hmm. rather have whistleblower cases go to the federal courts instead. Interesting. Uh, you know, that sounds like something that more Democrats would you would think would be on board with. You know, talking about their uh, you know criminal justice reform is such a central part of, uh, you know, the Democratic platform, uh, whatever that actually means. But just the idea of, you know, they, they were well, all about on board right now. You yeah, know, they, I mean, exactly. But they were all about whistleblowers for the past four years. And mm -hmm. there's no outpouring of support right now, uh, because obviously, this is inherently political. But, you know, just talking about politics, I want to talk a little bit about how this is being seen nationally, uh, just the uh, all issues with the FBI. Republicans have obviously slipped a little bit in the polls recently. Uh, you know, there's people saying they're not going to take as many seats in the House this year. Uh, the Senate is really, uh, it's going to be a, a, a tough win for them, a lot of people are saying. Uh, do you think there's a risk for Republicans about talking about, you know, some people said abolishing the FBI or really like defunding the FBI, things like that. Do you think there's a risk there uh, when a lot of Americans still have a positive view of the FBI? I mean, a recent Scott Rasmussen poll said 50 po 54% you know, still have a favorable opinion. How do Republicans kind of, uh, you know, um, get that messaging straight and, you know, work harder towards this? Okay, um, I think that, you know, there was a small handful of lawmakers when they talk about, uh, quote unquote, defunding the FBI, mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, and anytime there's any agency that is, quote unquote, acting bad, uh, when you're in the minority, uh, that's that's the only tool in your tool chest to uh, absolutely to to, uh, to a pretty much say hey guys you want your money you mm. better start uh, you know you know sh shaping up and that's where I think that uh, that that rhetoric comes from so of course you had the Democrats jump on Republicans saying CCC even you want to defund 
the the uh, police. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> apples and oranges. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's kind of get that straight here. Uh, that being said, uh, I think you know people like to you know you also have people con- like a uh, conflating like the, uh, the the FBI brass, i.e. the management, to the FBI rank and file. Mm-hmm. Uh, because as I, in my last piece, you have a lot of rank and file who don't have a lot of faith, if any faith, in Christopher Wray. Mm-hmm. Many, many of them didn't have faith in, uh, in a James Comey. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's and, and a lot of- just to be clear, you're, you're saying that rank and file were uh, calling for uh, Christopher Wray to get out. You said that earlier, correct? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Simply because he's not listening to them. I mean, I know a lot of people are saying, "Oh, the FBI is all pro Democrat." The F-, and then and remember, in the past, you had people who were saying the FBI was all pro Republican. Um, I'm just. I got to say, the FBI is pro. The FBI brass is all pro FBI survival. Yep. F- you know, pro institution. It's, it's pro establishment. Absolutely pro swamp. Exactly. That's mm-hmm. all they're about. Yeah, so I think uh, distinguishing between you know uh, rank and file members and then FBI brass is really an important route to take Absolutely. there. Yeah, um, but yeah, you know this has certainly been interesting. I mean, it's it's sad to see how our you know our agencies have really become so politicized. But hopefully, you know, if Republicans uh, take back you know the House, we can see some changes there. People actually be held accountable. But uh, Carrie, uh, thanks for coming on today. Really great to talk with you. And you know, this is exactly the kind of journalism I think we need. Uh, compared to what we're seeing from the corporate press today. Sure thing. Take care. Thank you.